Hi, I'm Pamela. My second little boy was born almost nine weeks early via an emergency C-section and he spent almost two months on the neonatal intensive care unit at Withenshaw Hospital in Manchester. He's now coming up to his first birthday. He's doing amazing and we've been really fortunate that he's home with us with no lasting medical conditions. I think the day where you as mum are discharged from hospital but you have to leave your baby in the neonatal unit because they're just not ready to come home yet is probably one of the hardest days of your life. Um, I remember walking across the car park at Withenshaw and seeing other families taking their babies home from the maternity unit, clipping them in the car seats, just being really excited to get their babies home and I felt like everybody was looking at me, the woman leaving without a baby and that everybody must be presuming that my baby had died and I just felt this overwhelming urge to run up to people that I didn't know to say no no he's not died he's in there he's gonna be fine um, and I'll be back for him soon um, that is a really hard day but it's those type of feelings that absolutely make you a mum. And the only advice I can give is, as soon as you get home, or even in the car if you've got your mobile with you, is just to call the unit. They accept phone calls from mums and dads 24 hours a day, and when they genuinely say, ring us any time, they do mean that. So yeah, just pick up the phone and say, hi, it's mum, I'm just ringing to check how they are and they will let you know and put your mind at rest. One of the things that really helped me cope with not being able to be with my baby all the time was the bonding squares that the neonatal nurses gave me. So they're just small pieces of fabric um, or they might be knitted and you keep one piece on you all the time. So I used to just tuck mine in my bra strap and then the other one stays in the incubator or the cot with the baby. And every time you visit, you just swap the squares over and the square that stays with the baby has obviously got your scent on and it helps comfort them and it's just a way of saying to them I'm here, I'm here with you. I remember the first time that I went on to the neonatal unit to see my baby. Um, I was recovering from a traumatic birth and a C-section and so I wasn't in the best shape physically or mentally. Um, and I can remember going in and seeing my tiny, tiny baby in a plastic box without any clothes on because they don't wear them in incubators, they just wear nappies. And he was covered in wires and there were all sorts of machines making all sorts of noises. And I just remember thinking, how have we ended up here? And how on earth are we gonna get home? Um, just felt incredibly overwhelmed. And I just stood at the side of his incubator and I put my hands on top of it because um, even though a neonatal nurse had come over and said, you know, I'll, I'll show you how to drop the sides of your mom so you can touch him. I just said no, because I was just absolutely terrified. Um, and at that moment, another mum walked into the unit and she walked straight over to her baby. She dropped the sides of the incubator. She started unclipping wires, moving things about. Um, she started changing her baby's nappy. And she was talking to the nurses in a language that 
could have been a foreign language for all I knew um, because she was talking about her child's medical condition and I just looked at her in complete awe and I just thought I will never be able to do that I'm stood here and I'm too scared to even touch mine um, and all I can say is um, give it a few days into your journey and you absolutely will be that mum. Um, it's really important that you get involved in your child's care and I wish I'd been brave enough to do it sooner. Um, there are all sorts of opportunities so from just changing their nappies to wiping behind their ears and round their neck, um, getting them changed when they do start wearing clothes, yeah get involved as soon as you can because um, as fabulous as the neonatal nurses are um, your baby doesn't want a neonatal nurse they want you one of the things that I really struggled with when we were on the neonatal unit was the inevitable question from well-meaning friends and family about when can baby come home. Um, the neonatal journey is, to use an absolute cliche, a roller coaster and one day it will be a step forward and then the next day it will be two or three steps back and you might experience some quite dark days where you're not sure if your baby is going to come home which is quite frankly terrifying um, and I just really struggled with seeing other families on the unit getting to take their babies home and their babies seem to have more complex medical needs than our child or their babies may have been born at a much earlier gestation than ours and I just couldn't understand why them, why not us and I found that incredibly hard. And I think the only advice that I can give is um, this is absolutely yours and your child's journey and it will happen when they are ready and you have to put your trust in the doctors and the nurses and just trust the process and it will happen when your baby is ready and there is no point pushing for any sooner because the last thing that anybody would want when you actually do get to go home is to be readmitted because you've pushed and it's been too early so yeah trust the process One of the other challenges that I faced when my son was on the NICU unit was that I had another little boy at home as well and he'd not even turned two and he needed his mum and no matter how much you wish you could you can't split yourself down the middle and be in two places at once and I felt incredibly guilty about that. I felt guilty that I couldn't be on the NICU unit 24 hours a day, seven days a week and I felt guilty that when I was with my eldest he wasn't getting the best version of his mum because my mind was just elsewhere and I also think that that guilt delayed some of my own physical recovery because I was just constantly stuck in a cycle of feeling like everything was my fault and I wasn't managing very well for either of them. Um, practically one of the things that I found really helped was that every day when I was leaving the unit for the last time that day I would talk to the nurse on charge and explain what time I'd be able to come back in the following day and that way the nursing team will absolutely work with you to make sure that your babies cares so when they have a feed, when they have a nappy change, when they have various medical checks done are done at a time when you as mom or dad can be on the unit and can be involved and I found that particularly helpful and also just just by talking to the nurses um, they made it really clear that actually it's not healthy for anybody to be on a neonatal unit 24 hours a day seven days a week and that you need to get your rest too and that you need 
a bit of time and a break and that way actually when your baby does get to come home you will be the best strongest parent that they could ever wish for so yeah don't feel guilty about not being able to be there all the time Having a baby on a neonatal unit is unbelievably stressful and it can take your mind places where you don't want it to go. My husband and I, when we look back, frequently say to each other, you know, come on, the good news here is that we're never going to have to do anything that hard ever again for the rest of our lives. And certainly when I was on the unit, I was just in survival mode, I was on autopilot, there was so much that I just wasn't processing properly and it's really important that as a parent of a neonatal baby you talk to somebody about how you're feeling and there's an amazing charity in Greater Manchester, it works with all the hospitals with neonatal units called Spoons and they provide trauma counselling for parents, peer-to-peer -peer support, so you could chat to another parent who has experienced the neonatal journey. And spoons are also there when you do get to take your baby home, so that support doesn't go away because it can be quite scary when you get home and there aren't those trained doctors and nurses. So just having an organisation that you can call on that understands the challenges that parents of neonatal babies face. I found that really useful. You will find on the unit that you lose your inhibitions quite quickly. So for the first couple of days that we were there, I felt very self-conscious about doing skin to skin. I would ask the nurses to pull the curtain, which they definitely will do for you and they don't mind doing that at all. And I used to wear a strappy little top under my jumper so I could just take my jumper off and then discreetly pull the top down because I really wanted to do skin to skin because it is obviously so beneficial to the baby and you as a parent. But then within a few days, I didn't mind and I realised nobody is looking at you, nobody's paying any attention everybody else is just focused on their baby and doing the best for them um, and also with losing your inhibitions um, I would sing to my little boy I would read him stories and at first you do feel a bit silly singing twinkle twinkle in front of a room full of strangers but actually the main thing is that your baby gets to hear your voice and gets that level of comfort from you and that's the most important thing so please don't worry about singing, about reading, about doing skin to skin on the unit, they're all really important. At one point when my little boy was on the unit, the doctors suspected he might have quite a serious bowel condition because after every feed his stomach would get very overblown, very distended and he was clearly in a lot of discomfort and yet he wasn't gaining the weight that they wanted him to gain. So they took him off to run a number of tests and obviously that was agonising for us, the wait for the results to come back because you are constantly thinking what if this? what if that, how would we cope in this situation. Fortunately for us, all the test results came back negative and there wasn't anything particularly concerning there for my little boy. It was just a matter of giving him the time to grow, giving him the time for his body to work out, right, this is how you process milk. Um, what that experience though did do for me as a mother was it made me become hyper aware of every single minute possibility that could go wrong. And I was incredibly aware of how precarious the situation was, even though I had trained medical experts saying, everything's fine, there's nothing to worry about here. 
Um, and I found that whenever the doctors would come round every day on their rounds and they would share information with us about my son's condition, I was internally second guessing them and I was constantly thinking, what if you've got this wrong? What if you don't know? What if this happens tomorrow? And um, that is a really tough state to be in. And the only advice that I can offer is the doctors and the nurses are absolutely the experts and they have seen hundreds of babies go through the NICU units. Um, they absolutely know what they're doing and they are the people to put your trust in. So don't go off Googling symptoms or Googling treatments. That's just not helpful. You have to listen to the experts that are in front of you. And also, if you find yourself in that mindset, to definitely talk to the Spoons charity that I've mentioned before. They have trained counsellors, they have peer-to-peer -peer volunteers, so you can talk to another parent who has been through what you are going through. And I found that that really helped me. The final thing that I would like to say to parents experiencing neonatal care, and this is going to sound ridiculous, but it's to try and enjoy it because these are actually your baby's first days, first weeks, first months, however long that you're on the unit. I remember the first time that I held my baby and I was absolutely terrified that I would hold him the wrong way, that I would upset him, that one of his wires would come loose, that something would go wrong, that I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy that first hold of my baby. And I remember looking up at the clock and thinking, just do it for five minutes. Just get through the next five minutes. And I found myself saying that a lot when I was on the unit, just get through the next five minutes. Um, and almost a year later, here we are, um, it's nearly my little boy's birthday. So yeah, I've had a year of getting through the next five minutes, but we've done it and um, I'm sure that you will too. So good luck. Mm -hmm.